tornado crossing the highway in uh, I-70 in near Grinnell, Kansas. This is ongoing as I'm watching it on live stream. That seems to be getting bigger. Seems to be getting bigger. And I honestly think the worst is yet to come right now. They've had the enhanced risk since I woke up this morning. But one thing has changed since I left. They've got a hatched risk for significant tornadoes. And the eastern panhandle of Texas, southwest Kansas, and western, far western Oklahoma. It says, Central and Southern Plains. The Evans storms have developed earlier and farther west than expected in the previous outlook issuance with the likelihood for discrete storm supercells prior to the squall line formation. The severe probabilities and categorical risk have been expanded west and northwest. You know, guidance has shown strong, you know, U.S. tracks through parts of southwest Kansas through the eastern Texas Panhandle and western Oklahoma this evening. Supporting a significant tornado threat in these areas. So basically, we can have strong to possibly long track tornadoes. Extended's on like me today. Let me read you the previous mesoscale discussion about this tornado watch. And there's tornadoes on the ground. You may not see condensation on the ground, but it's on the ground, I think, because it, this, there's an area of spinning dust right there. The threat for tornadoes, large hail, and wind damage expected to increase over the next two to three hours. That was issued at 3.51 Central Standard Time. Okay, discussion. The latest water vapor imagery shows a well-organized upper level low in the Four Corners region, an impressive 90 to 110 knot mid-level jet surrounding the base of the trough through the exit region of the jet spread over the southern and central plains at the moment. This along with the strong large-scale ascent associated with the system is aiding uh, a steady expansion of convective coverage across the tornado watch. As this occurs over the next few hours, all level moisture, instability, and low level shear will increase. This will mainly maintain an this will maintain an environment favorable to supercells. Surface dew points are currently in the lower sixties across. Yeah, the low roll. Rolling plains of northwest Texas. The low level moisture expand northwestward, well, northward into the eastern Texas panhandle, western Oklahoma, and southwest Kansas later this afternoon. As the sweet cells move eastward into this moist air mass, and as the low level jet and as the low level jet strengthens due to the approach of the upper level system, the tornado threat will likely increase. A potential will exist for a strong tornado or two. So we're probably talking about EF2+. Plus. Large hail and wind damage will be likely with the stronger storms. Well, the tornado's probably still over here. We just can't see it, but I have a feeling it's still on the ground. That, that's, that's something concerning. Anybody who is in, anybody who was, you know, saw the Elmer tornado six exactly six months ago, that was on Saturday. The kids weren't in school. People were at home hanging out. Okay, this is for a mesoscale discussion up there in Kansas and southwest Nebraska. I hope that the threat's going to be as high as it is down there in the Texas Panhandle in western Oklahoma. And I also want to bring your attention the enhanced risks they've got out for tomorrow. Across southeastern Louisiana. In southwestern Mississippi and southeastern Arkansas. Oh Lord. 
We're gonna have strong tornadoes tomorrow too. Jesus. There's gonna be two rounds though. We're gonna have this round. Any storms that can fire up in the warm sector ahead of the line will have the capability of producing a strong damaging tornado. And I know y'all haven't had to deal with that since uh January, I think. Third, second or third. That was like East Mississippi, and that was just an EF2, one that hit Roselle. The really significant one hasn't been since April 28th of last year. We had an EF4 on that outbreak, the Louisville tornado. And uh, the tornado event that occurred on my birthday on May 6th. We had none stronger than an EF3, that's just something to think about, but the... And in the May 16th event, Elmer, that thing was violent, and it only caused DF2 damage across this 35-mile path. Wow. I mean, if that thing touched down in near Fort Sill or near Lawton, the damage would have been a whole lot worse. It's not a thing about it. No, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Because at the rate these storms are going up, and they're all just staying by themselves... Every storm out there has the capability of producing a large, strong, damaging tornado right now. That's the way I see things with all the 21s I've seen in Texas and Kansas right now. Not in Oklahoma yet, but it's only a matter of time. 